Ryan, this is a really interesting story, this one, because you explored the market for four years to look for a five-axis machine. And you've ended up here with this Haas UMC 750. What happened during that four years and why is this machine here? Uh, well, basically, uh, we were traditionally running a three-axis machine and then I put forward that we should be progressive and start to run five-axis on our company. Um, I researched some of the main manufacturers uh, during that four years. Uh, then halfway through, um, I started to notice the Haas UMC. Um, so I started to do some basic research on it first, and then I started to look into some actual technical documents that have been produced by manufacturers that were using these machines in industry. Because importantly to state as well, th this is a, a five-axis machine, but you haven't got any Haas machines prior to this, although you have got a manufacturing facility, correct? That's correct, yes. Uh, I mean, obviously we just run three-axis Bridgeport. This was the first Haas. Um, I was impressed by the UMC because uh, it has enough finesse for small componentry that we have here. Um, it gets good surface finish and it can, it's got enough power to deal with the large scale um, products that we make as well. Going back a, a sentence or two ago, you mentioned you really did explore in detail. Uh, there was a white paper issued from a French company or something that, that said more about how the machine was built and what it was doing and that really turned your head as well, didn't it? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I thought as part of the research, I'd start to dig a bit deeper and actually look at companies that are, are using these in industry rather than just, just a normal advertising and marketing. Uh, I found a, a French company at manufacturing components for Airbus from titanium. So straight away, um, we knew, knew they were using the harder materials. Um, they'd also done a full analysis on the machine and were running successfully on shift. Um, they had done a full analysis on their componentry and found that they were holding excellent tolerance. State five things that you liked about this machine. Let's now park that white paper. You've got it yep. here. Other points that you, you, you really like about it. What's, give us five of them. Okay, we've got uh, capability, capacity, uh, flexibility. Um, it's easy to live with on a daily basis. Um, and it's got plenty of finesse. So you can tackle the very small, intricate components. Uh, and as I kind of remarked before, Paul, you know, we can do the big stuff as well. So it's a fantastic machine. Capacity is a, is a big thing and a, as a company yourself, you're an OEM, you produce your own products, it would probably be not unreasonable or wrong of me to say that you're not competing in that, that productive everyday subcontract environment. So for you, you need to make sure you're getting a quality product and you've got the, you know, the biggest machine to give you more flexibility, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, one of the good selling points on the house was uh, the table volume is very generous. Um, you know, we've got uh, a good uh, X, Y and Z value, so you've basically got 508 in the Y, 508 in the Z. Um, we've also got 720 in the X, so if you need to overhang a large piece of work, um, because they bias the tool changer to the left hand side of the machine, you've got all that kind of extra travel you can use as well, and I have done so. And part of your research as well, you said to me earlier that, of course, every company you have a budget to work to, you were struggling to find a machine that offered you this capacity with a five-axis uh, capability for a similar price point, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, one of the things that I found when I first started to uh, you know, explore the world of the five-axis machines was that uh, you tended to be compromised. So if you, you get a smaller machine, but as soon as you wanted to spec up the tool changer, uh, it would be go out of your price range. As soon as you wanted a faster spindle, it was out of your price range. And I found this with lots of the manufacturers. The one thing I like with the Haas is it's got enough of everything. Um, it's basically a very sensible package, it's well priced, and it's good value and good quality. Now I mentioned earlier as well that you're not maybe the same as a subcontract production machine shop, which you're not, you've claimed that one yourselves, but that doesn't mean that you don't need to tackle some pretty difficult jobs. So what are you machining on it? What have you done and what would you say are the, the kind of standout things over the past, well, year or so since you've had the machine? Oh, basically for us it, it's just anything and everything and that's why the machine is so good. Uh, I mean we've done all our prototype lead shielding work on the machine, we're doing great big kind of radial parts on the machine at the moment. Um, we'll be doing some leaf guides on the machine um, and one of the things that you know has really helped is being able to have a 40 position tool changer. Um, the electronic touch probe has been great. The through spindle coolant is excellent. You know, this is the first time we've been able to run U-drills on the machine. Um, so yeah, um, uh, also we using centropy tooling from WNT. We started trochoidal milling on the machine and high, high metal removal rates. Um, fantastic. Sometimes Haas users have a three-axis VMC and then they come onto the five-axis and they use the fact that they've got their, their machines already as a, as a half-sales reason to buy a five-axis. For you, it's, it's new to you, this five-axis, and Haas is new to you. If you were to buy a three-axis VMC, would you buy Haas? 
Yes, I would actually, to be honest. Um, having had experience uh, of their machine tools now, um, I would definitely go for I mean, like a VF2 or a VF3 if we were to ever complement this machine. The control as well, because you're new to, to the Haas control, new software to you. Have you found that easy to get to grips with because you are programming here a five axis machining uh, environment? Yeah, the control's brilliant. I mean, uh, we've got the next generation control system on here. So one of the benefits of that is with simultaneous machining um, on previous controls, I think if they did f uh, 15,000 revolutions on the table, then they'd have to be wound back. That's no longer the case. Um, also, we've got the intuitive touch probe system, uh, which is very useful. Um, I store a lot of offsets in the machine as well. So I have a grid plate on the table t from Tame Engineering. Uh, and basically each one of those grid plates has its own offset. So it's a very flexible control system and using FANUC as a base language, it means that you won't get any surprises. Getting into the machine, setting components as, as big as these or as, as small as you've got there is easy, isn't it? You, you've got the, you've got, you, you can crane parts if you need to and also getting rid of, I know we've got Swarf in the bottom of here, getting that out of the machine is also accessible too. Yeah, very, very accessible. Yeah, one of the benefits, obviously, as you say, um, is having the open top to the machine, which basically makes, you know, if you are crane loading a large scale job into the machine, then you've got no, no problems with clearances. We don't run a swarf conveyor on this machine purely because we just don't have the room. However, even on the job that you see on the machine now, we've been producing large quantities of swarf, but it's easy to decant that from the machine. There's no problem. Because it all uh, it finds itself in the base, which is easy then to hoover out, I suppose. Or and then it will just come out of the exit chute at the end of the machine, yeah, and it's just easy, straight in the bucket, no problem. You, you told me at the start of this, and we're going to conclude this interview now, Ryan, you said about capability, capacity, precision, finesse, and all the rest of it. Is there anything they've missed? Do you know, I don't think so. I mean, to be honest with you, they've done a great job. You know, um, the machine that we've got here, 40 position tool changer, 12K spindle. You know, obviously, if you want a little bit more, they've got the SS machine, which is also well priced. So, you know, I think um, if we were doing a, you know, a very strong bias towards simultaneous, then the 15K spindle and the uh, 150 degrees per second rotation uh, would be very useful to you. Um, but as the machine stands now, no, no, no complaints whatsoever. It was the best purchase we ever made.